So here is another scripture difficult to understand in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9. Ephesians 2 verse 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now, various people often use this verse to say that we don't need works because we are saved by grace through faith and not by works. Now, by works, a person might mean the law in general or just the Sabbath, tithing and the holidays or good works of charity in general. Well, preliminary thoughts. We must remember that although people say you don't have to keep the law, they really don't mean this literally. Do they mean you can kill or steal or murder with impunity? No, of course not. What they do mean is that you can break the Sabbath, not tithe, and not keep God's holidays, etc. We are to remember this when we explain such verses, so if need be, we can point out this inconsistent and hypocritical stance toward the law. The scripture shows that we are saved by faith, not works. But it does not in any way show that works are not needed. In fact, the very next verse, verse 10, shows that we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. End of the quote. And this is the purpose for which we are alive. Salvation comes as a gift from God. We could never earn salvation in a million lifetimes of perfect obedience. Many scriptures prove that obedience is a condition we must meet before Christ, that is, before God will give us as a free gift salvation. In Matthew 9, verse 17, If you will enter into life, said Christ, keep the commandments. This is the New Testament, by the way. And this is the Gospels, which speak about His works and His life. And as I said in one of my installments, The writings of the Apostle Paul, like this in Ephesians, cannot take precedence over the words and the example of Jesus Christ in the Gospels. Otherwise, all of you who believe so and twist the writings of the Apostle Paul have really put and placed Paul in the authority over Jesus Christ. So, uh, God gives his Holy Spirit only to those who obey him which is recorded in Acts chapter 5, verse 32, again in the New Testament, after the life, after the death of Jesus Christ and his resurrection. And if any man says he knows God and does not keep his commandments, he is a liar. First John chapter 2, verse 4. So, whoever thinks he knows God and does not keep his commandments, he is a false Christian, in other words. Now, faith and works go together. Faith without works is dead, and faith is perfected by our works, as says in James chapter 2, verses 20 through 22. Here is another difficult scripture in Philippians chapter 1, verse 23 and 24. Philippians 1, 23. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. Now, the question is, did Paul want to depart and be with Christ in heaven? Well, you see, Paul did not expect to go to heaven and receive his reward immediately at the death. Rather, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6 to 8, Paul explained that he would be with Christ at the day of Christ's appearing, which is, of course, his second coming. On the day Christ returns, the dead in Christ, who would have been sleeping in the dust of the earth, Daniel chapter 12 verse 2, will be resurrected to life, as it says in 1 Thessalonians and in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 52. Now this is the time Paul will receive his reward from Jesus Christ, as it says in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 10. He did not expect to go to a heavenly reward immediately upon death. Yet Paul said he was willing to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Why? Paul's answer is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 2, where he said that we earnestly groan to be clothed upon with our house from heaven, which means the spiritual body he expected to receive at the resurrection. So, you see, we see that Paul yearned, yearned to be delivered, as it says in Romans seven twenty four, to be delivered from this vile body of flesh 
and to end the difficulties and burdens of this life by death. He mentions other than in Romans, he mentions about that in Philippians chapter 1 verse 24. So to die, he said, is gain because the next moment of his consciousness would be the resurrection. Now Paul's statement in Philippians is clear. He was willing to remain alive for the sake of the Philippians who needed him as a teacher and apostle, even though his desire and he desired personally to be delivered by death from the troubles of this life. Paul, though dead and buried in the dust of the earth, would be earth, but he would be awaiting in the dust, awaiting the resurrection and ultimately be with Christ at his second coming to this earth. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 20, we have another scripture that is difficult to understand. And it says, Philippians 3, 20, For our conversion is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, some wonder if a Christian should vote. <laughs> uh, that has been a question for a while. And uh, obviously a difficult question for some. Well, you see, those who are converted to God's way of life, as it says in 2 Corinthians verse uh, 20 of chapter 5, they are ambassadors for Jesus Christ. And as ambassadors and citizens of the kingdom of God, the followers of Christ are no longer to be involved in man's system of government. Let us notice Philippians 3.20. New King James Version says, For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now Christ thought that his kingdom was not of this world. And consequently, his servants have no part in, but rather are called out of this world. To understand that, please see John 18, verse 36, and Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. The Bible reveals that it is God who sets up rulers and removes them according to his will. will. He revealed that to us in Daniel chapter 4, verse 17. The governments holding power do so only as long as God allows. While they do, the followers of Christ are instructed to be subject to them. Romans 13, verse 1. If, however, there should be a conflict between the law of God and the laws of men, of course, we are to obey God rather than men. You can see that in Acts chapter 5, verse 29, the words of the Apostle Paul and the Apostle, uh, sorry, not the Apostle Paul, the Apostle John and the Apostle Peter, who were persecuted for preaching the good news in Jerusalem among the Jews. And finally, Jesus Christ said he will return to set up his and God's kingdom. He will return to set up God's kingdom, which means actually a world government with righteousness and justice. We are admonished to pray for his kingdom to be established on earth. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 and 10, we are instructed to pray for that. And we are instructed to pray for that because then, and only then, will this world's problems be finally solved for all times.